Hi everyone, I'm Liz Brown Swanson bringing you an update from the historic and beloved Wayfarers Chapel in Rancho Palos Verdes where leaders from the Wayfarers and city officials came together for a press conference with the community to announce the fact that this chapel which had closed down in February due to being damaged from the landslide will now need to be disassembled and the hope is to preserve it and rebuild it for generations to come. My name is uh, Dan Burchett, Reverend Dan Burchett. Uh, I am the executive director of Wayfarers Chapel. Started with the chapel in year 2000, so I've been here a little while. I would like to uh, say thank you to the people who I have on stage with us. Uh, Katie Horak uh, is from Architectural Resources Group, and she will be sharing some information in just a moment. Megan Turner also is our project manager, hired by Wayfarers Chapel to help us in our process. And uh, Mayor John Cruikshank is with us as well and will be sharing some information as well as city manager Ara Maranian. Okay, uh, I would like to begin uh, by saying, uh, of course, we are all just uh, devastated in the reality that we are dealing with in our board of directors that comes from a variety of places in California and also the United States has been working feverishly, feverishly, to do uh, all that we can to preserve the chapel. And we've been dealing with uh, ongoing uh, changing uh, dynamic uh, that has happened uh, just nonstop. Day by day, uh, things have changed drastically. The accelerating destruction of Wayfarer's Chapel uh, caused by the Portuguese Bend landslide complex uh, is a looming tragedy that is felt by many. It is not just we, the chapel, but it's a square mile that affects many residents who uh, are concerned about maintaining their residence and being in their home. As bad as we feel about the chapel and our long history, by the way, today is uh, our 73rd anniversary. So we opened uh, in on Mother's Day that happened to be uh, on this date in 1951. So today marks uh, 73 years of uh, being uh, on this spot, uh, being a place for wayfarers to come and uh, uh, feel one with nature. But our hearts go out to our many neighbors who uh, their, their homes are affected by this. Uh, Wayfarers is committed to preserving our iconic chapel exactly as it has always been. We have never uh, varied from that commitment in any way. Um, and it's, if it can't be rebuilt on this site, and that is our first choice, we have never wanted to move off of this site, but if this square mile landslide renders that an impossibility, uh, we are looking, uh, open to looking for a similar site in Rancho Palos Verdes. We have no intention of leaving the area. We feel very committed to the community that has also uh, been committed to our uh, uh, our chapel as well. We're taking immediate action to carefully disassemble the chapel's historic materials as a necessary step in the preservation of the chapel for all the years to come and for the many people who will access it in the future. So I would like to at this time uh, introduce uh, Katie Horak as uh, the principal with Architectural Resources Group, who will also share some perspectives about uh, the care that we are taking in disassembling the chapel. I'm Katie Horak with Architectural Resources Group, and my statement will be brief. Um, as a National Historic Landmark, Wayfarers Chapel has a place among the most significant architectural masterpieces in the nation. With the land moving at its current pace, the only way to preserve this building is to move it to a temporary safe location until a suitable build site is identified. The chapel cannot be moved in one piece due to the nature of its structure, and therefore it must be disassembled. Our methodology for its disassembly has included a thorough study of Lloyd Wright's original drawings and historic photographs from the time of its original construction. Sorry. Only once we understand how the building was constructed can we take it apart in such a way that it ensures a faithful reconstruction, using as many original materials as possible. 
Retention of original material is paramount if National Historic Landmark status is to be retained. The most delicate components of the building include the massive redwood glulam beams, the elegant network of steel and glass, and the blue roof tiles. These materials will be disassembled first. As you can see, they've already suffered damage from the Earth's movement, and with each passing day, the window for salvaging these materials closes more and more. You might have heard when you walked up, a piece of glass shattered as we were standing here. It is happening now. Once these material, materials are safely removed, salvage and relocation of other materials on the site can be studied and undertaken. Working with a 3D model of the building, our team will label each component part as it is disassembled so that it can be put back together again exactly as it was constructed in the same configuration. And finally, disassembling a historic building as iconic as Wayfarer's Chapel is never the first choice, but at this point, it is the only choice lest the building be completely destroyed. Thank you. Good morning. It's an honor to be here. I uh, wish it was under different circumstances. Uh, I joined the Wayfarers team as the construction manager a year ago to do a restoration of the chapel. And over the course of the last year, we've seen the movement of the land side uh, pick up. And approximately three months ago, we were looking at gaps of a couple inches. And over the course of the last few weeks, it's been movement about of this land side of about seven inches a week and we're seeing movement within the aspects of the construction of about three inches per week so we are on the you know urgency to to deconstruct this chapel so as to avoid any catastrophic loss um, the movement of the landslide is affecting the structural elements as katie said and the steel torque is causing this glass to shatter we don't know what will happen or when the landslide could be taking this progress forward. So we will be commencing with construction uh, in the very near future, starting roughly this week or next. Um, the team that we have assembled is an incredibly talented and dedicated team with the chapels, the Wayfarers congregation, and the city's best interests at heart. ARG is a renowned architectural, um, historic architectural group. KC Restoration is a historic construction company that manages restorations and reconstructions of historic buildings um, similar to, to this and very, uh, very many other um, Frank Lloyd Wright and Lloyd Wright and prominent buildings throughout Los Angeles and TGE which is an engineering firm who specializes in deconstruction as well so with this team the chapel is in the best hands it can be in order to proceed with the, uh, the deconstruction and temporary storage so that we can plan for the rebuild within the next few years. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce uh, people that, uh, a gentleman that you know well, I'm sure, the mayor of Rancho Palos Verdes, Mayor John Kruchank. Uh Thank you, Dan. John Cruikshank, mayor of the great city of Rancho Palos Verdes. Um, of course, this site means a, a tremendous amount to our city and to myself. I actually studied under the great architect Pierre Koenig, who had developed and designed the case study homes number 21 and 22 which were actually built on historic sites as well and very difficult to uh, you know marvelous sites that were had dramatic significance to those cities and just like Wayfarer's Chapel and it's designed by you know Lloyd Wright so here in Rancho Palos Verdes we roughly have 675 acres spanning one square mile that make up the Portuguese Bend landslide complex. And it's now, of course, moving at a rapid rate, damaging our roads, our infrastructure, our homes, and of course, this beautiful chapel here, Wayfarers. According to our latest data, land is moving six to nine inches per week in the Abalone Cove landslide, five to nine in the Portuguese Bend landslide, and one to four inches in the Klondike Canyon landslide complex. In the middle of the complex is moving the fastest with over nine inches per week. And if you do that math, it's about 39 feet per year. The last time I stood before you at this chapel, the city was navigating the bureaucratic challenges to move a path forward to respond to the crisis. We are calling on Governor Newsom and President Biden 
to declare a state of emergency for the city. Of course, I'm happy to report that they determined that the city actually falls under the existing state of emergency related to the winter storms and that the president granted the governor's request for a federal disaster declaration for those storms. This potentially makes federal assistance and funding available to the city and our two geological hazard abatement districts in Rancho Palos Verdes that are working to slow this land movement. The city remains focused on a variety of short-term and long-term solutions to address the crisis. Last week, my colleagues and I had approved the installation and construction of two emergency dewatering wells called hydro augers that will remove water underground that's contributing to this movement. The first step in that process is drilling 150 foot underground wells to gather data to validate the three dimensional models that our geological team have developed to make sure that those assumptions that they made were correct and to better estimate the quantity and quality of the groundwater to be removed. Construction of those emergency hydrographers is expected to begin in June. Thanks to our partners at the Abalone Cove Landslide Abatement District, two new dewatering wells were just recently installed and are now operational. We're hopeful that these wells will alleviate the land movement. In addition to those emergency measures, the city is working on an expedited timeline to implement our long-term Portuguese Bend landslide remediation project. While we know we cannot stop the landslide, we have spent years identifying peer-reviewed engineering solutions to greatly slow the movement. We want to thank elected leaders in our state, federal, and local government agencies, our utility companies, our homeowners associations, and our other community partners, including Wayfarers Chapel, for their collaboration to help us solve this problem to the greatest extent possible. Nevertheless, more resources are needed if the city and its partners are to implement the full suite of long-term solutions to mitigate this issue that our experts say are necessary to slow the rate of movement. Our city staff has been working expeditiously with Wayfarers on permitting to begin the disassembly of the chapel building as soon as possible to prevent further damage to this iconic historic landmark. After obtaining approval from the National Park Service last week, the city issued the necessary permit to Wayfarers so they can begin disassembling this building. The city is assisting Wayfarers in identifying a temporary storage location for the disassembled chapel potentially on city property or off-site. While disassembly and storage are the current focus, we are committed on working with wayfarers to ensure the chapel can quickly be rebuilt on a geologically safe location somewhere within our city if possible. This includes exploring potential sites on city property, however any location on city land would need to be unencumbered land without deed restrictions. These discussions are in very early stages and of course we have not identified any sites. We're pleased the Wayfarers is working with the National Park Service and the preservation ex experts at Architectural Resources Group to ensure the chapel will be preserved according to the highest standards of historic preservation. The city remains in regular, probably daily contact with Wayfarers and stands ready to support the chapel in any efforts we can. The chapel has not been red or yellow tagged. However, city staff coordinated with Wayfarers to ensure the administration building was cleared before it was red tagged on April 11th. The Wayfarers office building and two homes in Seaview neighborhood remain the only structures in our city that are red tagged since our ancient landslides began accelerating following the 2022-23 winter storms. The city of Pal Rancho Palos Verdes treasures Wayfarers Chapel and their place in our community and will continue to support their leaders as they navigate through their challenging times. And with that, I'd like to introduce our city manager, Ara Marani. Good morning, I'm Ara Marani, Rancho Palos Verdes city manager. 
and thank you for being here this morning. I, I, I know you mentioned that this is a devastating um, time right now for Wayfarers and for the city. It's actually a very sad day for us today. Um, 73 years ago, Wayfarers Chapel opened and um, is celebrating, it was 1951, and in 1956, five years after the chapel opened, the uh, Greater Portuguese Bend landslide started moving. And this is an ancient landslide. It's thousands of years old, but it was, it was inactive until 1956. And um, there was grading. LA County was regrade or grading the roadway to or extend Crenshaw Boulevard down to Palos Verdes Drive South. That triggered the ancient landslide. It has not stopped moving since 1956. It's actually, in the world of geologists, it's considered the largest, fastest moving landslide in North America. But for the most part, it has been, it's, it's had its ups and downs, the landslide, but it's been relatively stable. And as the mayor said, in the winter storms in uh, 2022, 20, 23, uh, exasperated the condition and what we're experiencing right now is unprecedented land movement. You heard some numbers where in certain areas of the landslide complex, it's moving at nine inches a week. We are experiencing significant um, consequences of this land movement. And one of them is, is what's happening here on this property and with this historic landmark. Um, the city incorporated in 1973, we're 50 years old. So we're slightly younger than the chapel and, and Wayfarers Chapel has been um, an iconic symbol of Rancho Palos Verdes. And the fact that um, the, the mayor and myself were asked to be here and are, are standing uh, before you is a testament on how committed the city is to work with Wayfarers Chapel to preserve its history and to make sure that uh, even though it's going to be dismantled, that we're going to work with with the, the the board of directors of the chapel to make sure that it could be preserved, the, the material saved, uh, saved and and preserved properly, and that they can be able to rebuild when when the landslide is stabilized. So, thank you for being here again. As we have shared in the press conference today. Uh, we are devastated by the situation, but we are doing everything that we know uh, to be able to restore the chapel fully. All along, our first hope is that we could restore it on this property. As damaged as it is, it's just literally unbelievable. If you were not standing looking at it, you would just think, how in the world has concrete buckled and, ch and cracked and moved the way it has? Uh, we've got many, many pictures of the variety of uh, failings that are happening. Even the pictures that you see do not convey the uh, extreme um, uh, breaking apart that we're seeing on the property. It's devastating. There's gonna be millions of dollars to save this chapel. How can the community help you right now? Well, uh, many hands make light work, and so uh, it doesn't matter how small the contribution, if Wayfarers has uh, made a difference in your world and your life, uh, even making a small donation uh, will be a contribution that becomes a part of the whole. The city of Rancho Palos Verdes is going to do what it can to help and support Wayfarers Chapel. Uh, they're going through quite a bit today in regards to um, you know, with the next steps in dismantling the chapel and finding a secure place to put it while they find uh, either potentially a new location for them to rebuild or as was just mentioned that they would love to have this as their first option to rebuild here but of course doing that would be irresponsible if the land is still moving as quickly as it is. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of data to digest uh, but I think the city is behind Wayfarers Chapel and that's the message I want to convey that we're doing what we can to help and but there if we are going to allow them to use city property we need to make sure that that is allowed because the a lot of our city property is certainly the city uh, civic center property is federally uh, controlled and owned so the very first step is where to store the structure the chapel structure and so that's what we're looking at is utilizing city property to safely store this structure that you see behind me. Um, ultimately though the question is where do they rebuild 
and uh, Rancho Palos Verdes wants Wayfarers Chapel in Rancho Palos Verdes. We're, we're interconnected. They were actually here before we incorporated as a city and um, so many people have uh, obviously come here uh, to for their services, also to get married. Uh, so so many important memories are here at Wayfarers Chapel. Obviously difficult times for the Wayfarers community, also for our entire community as we all navigate this landslide together. What's your message overall? This our city staff, the council's working around the clock trying to address it. Are you optimistic that we're making progress? Well, I'm, I of course know we're making progress. Uh, like was mentioned during this press conference that uh, our expectation is is that we start construction on our two hydro auger wells in June. We're going to be starting as early as the next week or two doing exploration wells of 150 foot deep to confirm a lot of the uh, data that we've been putting forth to develop those plans. So we're going to be looking at that. So work is happening and we've had a lot of hurdles to go through. We're going to do everything we can to decelerate the rate of movement of the Portuguese Bend landslide. As we wrap it up, you're standing in front of this iconic chapel that we so much love. Any favorite memories you might want to share from the chapel? Well, you know, it's interesting. I personally didn't get married here, but I remember one of the first uh, supervisors that I worked fit with, uh, he got married here. But just coming up here to this uh, location and seeing it for the first time myself after learning about it while I was studying architectural engineering. Um, it's just breathtaking here and, and there's something really magical about this place and so I know we all in our hearts want things to work out for them but for now our hope is is that you know people find comfort to know that there's great leaders here at Wayfarers Chapel and also our city is behind their work. There's going to be a lot happening on site as the team mobilizes to start disassembling the chapel and a lot has already been happening. We've been working night and day, weekdays, weekends to prepare for this moment and that has really included a lot of research. We've been deep in the original drawings and in the historic photographs to really understand how this building was put together to begin with so that we can take apart take it apart in such a way that it can be put back together. And my training is in as an architectural history. I'm an architectural historian, so we studied this building in school and then we were, have been very lucky to work with Wayfarers Chapel over the years on some planning documents. So the, uh, we worked with them on a historic structure report about 10 years ago, which was an in-depth look at the history and condition of the building. And then we recently completed their National Historic Landmark nomination. So, and that was a very in-depth uh, study of its significance at the national level. So to come here after all of that work and to come here and see the current state of the building was a very emotional experience for so, us. So you, you were part of the process of getting the National Landmark status, which happened just at the end of 2023. Like you were saying, here we are months later. How was this determined to be a landmark. So the key things about or the key thing about national historic landmark status is that the building needs to be nationally significant. So there are only about 25 or 30 NHLs in all of Los Angeles County. It's a very high honor. So the nomination process you really need to prove that this building is influential on a national scale, which Wayfarers Chapel certainly is. And regarding that, because it is a national historic landmark, I didn't know if there would be other rules or regulations before it can come down that they would have to adhere to, especially if they want to be able to reclaim that status. Well, how does that work? Yes, so because it is an NHL, there are guidelines for projects that involve National Historic Landmarks um, from the National Park Service, so we are in contact with them and, and using the guidelines that they have provided. It doesn't mean that they can't take, we can't move the building. The National Park Service understands the unusual circumstances, and there is no there is no opportunity to keep the building here without losing it. So when it's destruction or relocation, we choose relocation. Hi, my name is Megan Turner. I'm the construction manager for Wayfarers Chapel. And I was originally brought on in the spring of 2023 to do a restoration of the chapel in its existing location. It was time to do, to upgrade the, uh, the painting and the stone, um, or just refresh and restore everything on site and, and also uh, reinforce the foundation below the chapel, just having been here for now 17, 73 years today. Once we started seeing the movement of the chapel um, and the property around, we, we started having additional surveys done and soils reporting and various um, 
data collected as as we were seeing gaps here and there. And that, like I had mentioned previously, it was you know, maybe a quarter of an inch to a half inch in various locations. And then as the winter um, approached and we started getting more rains again come November and December, those gaps started increasing and we realized that we had more movement than just normal seismic activity or landslide activity. It was uh, really ramping up with the rains that we had. And so at that point, we had to pivot and really start understanding, okay, what's going on? We we started losing a number of pieces of glass um, due to movement in the chapel. So we applied security film. We replaced a number of pieces of glass and we applied security film to um, every piece of glass in the chapel. And, um, and then we started to try, trying to figure out, okay, what are our next steps? How do we get a sense of what's going on? And that happened probably around February when we realized that a few of the pieces of glass, it was starting to uptick. And it was going to be important that we needed to to close the chapel for the safety of the congregation and the community and figure out a way to um, go forward. And so with that, we were trying to figure out different avenues that we could, could proceed with. And ultimately, we came to the realization that based on the movement that we were seeing with the landslide data that we got and having at that time, it had increased to about three to four inches a week, and now we're at a point where it's like seven to nine inches a week, that we were going to get to a point of no return. And so over the course of the last month, we've put together a team with Architectural Resources Group as the historic architect that will has managed the process of the sequencing for the deconstruction and salvage and protection of the material and the documentation so that the chapel can be reconstructed. I know it's really difficult for the community to understand that you have to take it down to save it, but this is the only choice. And you also mentioned that you love this chapel. You know this chapel. Yeah, I love this chapel. I, I studied architecture and, and I studied this building when I was going to school in New York City prior to ever being here. And then when I moved um, back to California and to the South Bay in 2008, I drove up here and just really took in the, the property and I've been to a number of weddings here. And it's just such a special part of the South Bay and Rancho Palos Verdes. It's devastating. It's devastating that we're standing here today, just days before the dismantling of this iconic building that, as you you can tell from the press conference so many people are very passionate about we all are um, it's it's been it's a symbol of, of Rancho Palos Verdes and in this the site is 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 spiritual magical um, and so but what we're experiencing here on these grounds um, is the same that's happening behind the gates in, in all of our residential neighborhoods and many people are are traumatized and, and um, suffering because of this landslide. I started coming here six years ago and uh, uh, my wife and I were married here five years ago and uh, you know, we've been coming on a regular basis at least you know a couple times a month if not every single Sunday and to see the transition and the catastrophic transition and damage to the property has been really really challenging to, uh, to, to navigate. But I think that it's unfortunate and it's sad, but I try to focus on a more hopeful future in that this, the only way we can preserve this beautiful place that, you know, I think of as like Rivendell of the Lord of the Rings. I mean, it's this glass cathedral in elfin woods. Um, the only way we can preserve it is if we disassemble it, preserve it, stabilize either the terrain here or find a better site locally and then rebuild it as best we may. So. This land is, uh, is sacred land here. That's the way we feel. Anybody that's come here for any length of time feels that it's sacred land and it's n never to be destroyed. It's God's it's God's country. It should be noted that this press conference was held 73 years to the day that the doors of the Wayfarers Chapel opened to the community. And we all hope and look forward to the day that the chapel will reopen again for all Wayfarers. I'm Liz Brown Swanson reporting for RPV TV. Thanks for tuning in.